What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. Yes, sir. It is 10 o'clock Eastern, August 8, 2021. Halenville Live, John Conklin, Neil Daly, Analog Kid. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Awesome, man. Doing well. It's hot. Hot out here in L.A. It's been triple digits for about a month straight now, but doing well. Yeah. Yeah. It's raining here in New York. It's all it's done this whole summer. Uh -oh. <laughs> right. I'd like to give you some of the rain, Neil, you know? Oh, God, we need it bad. We need yeah. it bad. Yeah. Like the second rainiest July on record it was here, and then it's August is starting out the same way. John, I must say that that was a treat a couple of days ago watching the Wolfgang set live with you, dude. <laughs> I figured you'd like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was so cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Technology is great, right? When it works. <laughs> when it works. Yeah. Blessing and a curse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Simon Hosford. Hey, dude. Hey, Simon. Hey, Simon. Yeah, I'm gonna, well, Sandra. real quick before we move on. So, Simon, just uh, thanks for watching, bud. Um, I'm doing a. Your, your guitar is coming along great, Simon. As you guys know, we've talked about this before. I'm building him a, a custom Tour 85 Relict version of the 5150. And the goal was to get it out to him and get it to Australia by the end of the month so that he could do a show. And we talked about the show that he's going to do and all this stuff. So far, we're on schedule. Unfortunately for him, um, COVID is not cooperating. So as of this moment, our fingers are crossed that he's still going to get to do the show. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's, that's the state of the world we live in right now, but fingers crossed. Um, if he doesn't get to do it at the end of the month, he'll read, you know, he'll do it at some point and we're going to get him that guitar and you guys are going to love it. And he's such a phenomenal guy communicating with him back and forth for the last month through the process, you know, getting his input, letting him tell me what kind of things he wants to make it his own and allowing me to do my thing at the same time. He's been phenomenal. I love the guy. So Simon, thanks for, thanks for being there, bud. Yeah. Caleb. <laughs> I was about to ask you how the nerd Halen show was. Um, let me read a couple of more. Nate, Keith Campbell, Keith H. Sup, Keith? Sandra. Sup, Keith. Hey, Sandra. Um, yeah, let's see. Christopher Live Sow. Hey, dude. What's up, Chris? Chris. Everybody's favorite hey. Nightbot. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Nightbot's working. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Thomas. And yeah, everybody welcome. Sweet, got a good crowd tonight. Um, so Wolfgang, he started the week. 
Fenway Park. Yeah. Um, and a couple of more, a couple of days later, we played MetLife Stadium there, John. MetLife. Got to, got to watch that. Um, last night, he played uh, House of Blues in Cleveland. Um, Can't wait to talk about that show. Longer set. Longer set than most. Yeah. New song. Also, yeah, um, yeah, he had done it once before, the um, and this evening at Comerica Park in Detroit, um, yeah, John, so, so you. You went last minute, or yeah, how'd that work out? Well, pretty much, my son was uh, home, and I was like, "Hey, you want to go see Guns N' Roses with Wolfgang with me?" And he's like, "Yeah, let's go." So I, I uh, went on StubHub, grabbed some tickets, and uh, we left. Uh, I'm in Westchester, a little north of the city, the suburbs, and uh, we left about four thirty, and took us like. Less than an hour to get to MetLife, you know, with the traffic. Because I got to go into Jersey. So it's never fun, you know, especially during rush hour. You know what I mean? So, but we made it there in plenty of time. And uh, Bridge and tunnel crowd. Yeah, you got, you know, you're <laughs> not, yeah, exactly. And you still did it in less than an hour, John, from where you Yeah, were? yeah, exactly. We, we, you know, Waze is great because we, we you know, was, I'm on the, uh, <laughs> Kid, you know, we were talking about 287, the Tappan Zee Bridge or the Mario Cuomo Bridge, whatever whatever it's called today. I don't know how much longer it's going to be Mario Cuomo Bridge. But, yeah, I, <laughs> but, uh, yeah the, we hit terrible traffic coming across there. But then we just jumped on some side roads and it brought us to the, you know, the park. That's a park huge layer. place. What was the attendance there? I'll tell you what, I didn't get it a number, but. When we pulled in there, I mean, first off, the, the parking was forty bucks to park. Can you believe that? Forty bucks. Oh, God, it's, right? Insane. I was like, I'm, maybe I'm getting old. I'm used to paying like twenty five, but it's like I'm like forty bucks. I'm like, holy shit. Pardon my French, but uh, yeah. So the, the uh, we got in there, and and you know there must have been even like tiered level of parking. Maybe people bought with their tickets because we were like really far from this uh, from the stadium which worked out well at the end because we were right near an uh, exit ramp onto I-95, yeah. you know, the, the main thoroughfare there. So, but, uh, and it, it was a crazy tailgate going on. I mean, it was, everybody was out barbecues and just that's, you know, it was crazy. It was, it was like a, it's like a Jimmy Buffett show or something. There were a lot of people. <laughs> it really, exactly. It really was. I think it was at Jones Beach at the Jimmy Buffett show, you know? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it was, was kind of like that. It would, you know, except they didn't, people didn't bring their own AstroTurf and like, you know, boats and stuff like that. Like they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it, it, so the, the people and the people stayed out there very late. Hey, Keith grew up over there near Nyack, he's saying that's not that far. Um, so uh, people stayed out there for quite a while, and uh, you know, uh, the tailgate because Guns N' Roses didn't come on until about 8 30. So even after Wolfgang, it was a there was a, had to be like 45 minutes after him before the band hit the stage after him, so you know. I guess they, you know, they were waiting as long as they could for everybody to get in from the outside in the parking lot or, you know, sell some more shirts and, and, and beer and stuff, I guess, you know. Hey, we've come a long way. I saw Guns N' Roses and they didn't take the stage till midnight. Once. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, <laughs> so oh, you know, God. three, like two hours after the last band played. Yeah. So, Neil, was, was that on a Your Illusion? Did you see them then? No, um, this way I did. This was when uh, this was. It's not a version of Guns N' Roses I really like to brag about going to see. Oh, but the middle period. Yeah, yeah. It was Axel and a touring band, essentially. But that so was, he was still coming on late back then. I thought that. Oh, yeah. No, really? no, he was still doing it. He was, was still it doing an indoor it. arena or like a stadium. No, it was an indoor stadium. Uh, yeah, it was an arena. Um, and it was I. If, I mean, I, me and a friend went there, and of course, you know, you're. 
you're drinking from the moment you get there and then you're drinking during the opening bands. I couldn't tell you who opened at this point, but I remember, you know, then 10 o'clock rolls around and then 11 o'clock rolls around and there's no sign then 1130. And I swear to God, I mean, if it wasn't for the price of the tickets we paid, me and my buddy were almost thinking about, let's screw this. Let's get out of here. This is ridiculous. And we did. We waited. And then, of course, they play a three-hour show. So you're there till 3 o'clock in the morning. And then, and then you're just bitter and mad and drunk at the end of the night. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember, I think uh, it was a giant stadium, the old stadium, the format life, that uh, Axel pulled one of those things with Metallica was the opening band. And I think, I'm pretty sure Metallica came back and played for, like, a, a huge, longer, like a – you know, longer set yeah. because because of that. Because Axel didn't show up for a while, I think. Yeah, yeah. I heard lots of stories about that tour with Metallica. Well, that's what started the riot in Canada. The, yeah. the night yeah, that yeah, James, yeah. James Hetfield burned himself. And then, yeah, that Axel was he like, yeah, I don't on, know. Right? That was the reason. He came on for a, he came on for like a song, I think. Oh, he okay. started a set and then oh. did, you know, somebody took pictures and he got mad at the security guard. So he walked off. And, you know, and they asked him to come on early because James Hetfield had lit himself on fire. So right, right. everybody, so Axel was pissed off that he had to come on earlier, but the, the, the booking agent was saying, we're going to have a riot on our hands. We can't say, you know, you guys, you guys got to come out They're Like Metallica set was, you know, 20 minutes long. So they're like, come out and do this. And then he just came out in a pissy mood like Axel. He was just Axel. That was who he was in 1992. He seemed like he was in a good mood the other night. Very good mood, actually. You know? Yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. He should be. He should be. Yeah. That's John, something. did he do? Did he do the new song that he debuted in? Um, Absurd. Fenway? Yeah, he did. They played that. Yeah, and he uh, like he announced. Uh, you know, like he. I guess he claims that he doesn't know all this technology stuff. He goes, "Oh, for all you people who who know how to do all this stuff, uh, he goes, it's going to be. Uh, you can download it at midnight tonight." And he goes, "We're going to play it now. It's called Absurd." And then they played it. Yeah, cool. It's it's funny that it, it's funny that that happened that day because Tony and I had just talked a couple of days before that, and I was just venting about how I was kind of sick of the fact that Guns of this reunion, the Not in This Lifetime reunion of Guns N' Roses, is five years old now, and they haven't released, a, they haven't played a new song. Yeah. And I was, you know, I, and I know that they've they've been working on stuff. You know, there's Slash has alluded to it. They've, you know, apparently there's an album done. You know, which with yeah. Axel, you know, I'll I'll believe it when I see it. But I, you know, it's just weird timing because I mean, this happened like the day before he debuted that song. We were just talking about the fact that there's no new music from them, and it's getting kind of old. See, you know, for people that have seen the the reunion tour two or three times, it's the same set. You know, I mean, maybe a song or two different, but. So who's it was. This, who's this band that opened at the House of Blues last night? It looks like it's Monica from Micah. The girl from Albany. Oh yeah, is that the yeah, one? Yeah, it's her, right? It, it looks like it looks like the one who sings like uh, Ann Wilson. She does all yeah, the exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. She it it just like, like Ann. That's Wilson. her. Yeah. It does look like her, yeah. She's yeah, it's <laughs> Monica from Micah. Where's she from? Albany. Yeah, she's from Albany. Yep. Yeah. yeah, she's she's real good. Yeah. They did a a heart song in their set, and she sounded exactly like Ann Wilson. Was it Barracuda? I can't remember. Might have been. Might have been. Um, so, John, tell us more about about your night, though. I'm I'm really curious. Like, how did how did the crowd feel? I mean, was it a heavily Guns and Roses crowd, and then people just kind of haphazardly in the Wolf, or were yeah, there yeah. a lot? You know, yeah, I'll be honest, I was a little disappointed because uh, when Wolf went on, he goes. The place was, you know, fairly empty. There was only maybe, I would say, maybe six thousand people in there at the at the most. Mm. You know what I mean? It was like it yeah, was surprising. Yeah. Some people were filing in, and and like one of my friends was outside, and he rushed in when he when he knew he was on. But yep. uh, yeah, I mean, hey, they missed out because it, it was a phenomenal set. His voice was just—it was incredible. He sounded really, really good. The whole band sounded really. I have to say, it was 
it was it was pretty impressive really really was and uh you know as the show went on more people filed filed in but i was trying to to uh gauge like the reaction around me the people and, right uh, right and people seem to you know, they seem to like it you know what i mean I, I it was that was the good thing i could gauge it kind of, i could feel it that they were getting into it a little bit as it as the show went on too with the you know and you know a few of the songs i could say people reacted to pretty well like you know surprisingly that you could tell they didn't know the song, but they but they like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, as the tour goes on, I mean, I'd like to like like when he played the club shows, warming up for it. You know, those were Wolfgang fans, so those people sang the words to the songs. They knew the songs. You know, I'm hoping by the end of this tour, once once you know the the people get acclimated to it, I would love to see a much bigger Wolfgang turnout by the end of the year. Yeah, I think you will because you know they're the. You know the proof is in the songs. They're, they're, it's good stuff. Yep. You know what I mean, yep. and it's it's likable for anybody. If you like, you know, hard rock music, how can you not like it? I, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just good. It's quality stuff. So, but uh, you know, it, it people were filing in, and and I could tell that there, there was a positive, you know, vibe going on there with you know everything. And people, they, you know, they they were familiar, I guess, with distance the most out of all out of all the songs sure. that you know. Yeah. But uh, but think it over went over pretty well because you know it has a hook uh, a very catchy hook. Yeah, so I noticed people seem to react to that uh, that song a lot, and it's a great song. So um, but, great uh, lyrics in that song. That's that's probably one of my favorites off the album. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a, such such a well crafted song. His yeah, his I, the, not just the lyrics but his vocal melody yeah, line. The melody, is, yeah. yeah, I mean that's that that kid's instinctively a good song pop songwriter. Yeah, he, you know that's. that's I think that is my favorite one. I always, yeah. I, it's in my head all the time. That's yeah. So, you know, yeah. you can't it's so it. damn catchy. Like yeah. it's, it, you know, a credit to him. That's, that's instinctive, man. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the set list was great, you know, he, he because, uh, you know, he, he just pounded you with all these great, great songs. <laughs> well. You know, don't back down. is just, we all knew that was going to be a great opening song and, uh, that kind of set the tone for things, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You know, uh, and all of them, they and sounded they sounded incredible. They recreated the you know you know considering that he played all the instruments on the album, mm -hmm. they, the band they recreated it very well live. Even the background vocals and things like that. It was it was actually pretty. You could tell. You it know, very I well just uh, I just read a I just read an article today. I think it was on like classicrock.com or something. And he was talking about um, when he was piecing the band together because he knew all these guys. All these guys were like in the same circles. Frank Sidoris was the guitar player with Slash and Miles Kennedy. Um, the bass player, let's see, I wrote it, I got the guy's name down, uh, or the other guitar player that they brought on for the tour, uh, John Jordan, he opened for Alter Bridge, who had Miles Kennedy, and also Mark Tremonti, and then the drummer was from Mark Tremonti's band, so they were all kind of in the same circles and everything, but the thing I liked about the, in the interview that I read, he said that when he brought on you know, him when they were rehearsing for the tour, it was Frank Sidoris and him trying to work out what guitar parts they wanted to do. And Frank's not really known as a singer. So then he saw this other guy play in a band open for Alter Bridge, and then he brought him in. And that guy, he said, not only does he add the extra guitar elements that, you know, that they're that so they can recreate all the album sounds with overlays and right. overdubs, but then that guy can also hit harmonies yeah. and make it sound like the album. So, the one thing Wolf said is he goes, There's no backing tracks on this live tour. Yeah. He said, All the vocal parts are live, and it's us, you know, three, four guys singing live. Yeah. And from everything I've heard, it's phenomenal, man. They 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 sound like the album, yeah. You they're killing it. it. They're yeah, some time. Yeah. yeah, they spent some yeah, time. Yeah, I'm, on the I'm so impressed. I'm yeah. so impressed when a band sounds like the album live. Yeah, and they de they did the equipment. They the guitar sounded crunchy. They sounded great. Everything sounded yeah. really good. Yeah. So so John wants the parking lot emptied and everybody's inside. What was the attendance there? I you know so so I. I so the story was, so I, I was in the 100 section, which is the lower level for Wolfgang, and you can see in that video. But then after that, my buddy who was down on the field, uh, he called me up. He's like, hey, I got two tickets from my friend. He goes, he wanted me to try to sell them. I couldn't get rid of them. He goes, They're, he paid 600 for them. He goes, I'm, he just said, give them to you. So I was like, okay, cool. So, <laughs> so he came back to the, uh, the field level. He came up the stairs and he handed them to me. And the security guard said, hey, so you got to just exit the stadium. 
and run around to this gate and then you get to get a bracelet and then you can you'll come through the tunnel and out onto the field and i'm like all right cool so my son and i we uh we did that we ran out there but we knew it was like you know we, we didn't want to miss the show and it was you know at that point it was like okay we had a lot to do to get outside and everything like that so we thought we thought we might not you know might be pretty late to get in, in there but uh we made it around. There was a line and we got the bracelet and we got in and uh, right in, during the second song, Mr. Uh, was it Mr. Brownstone. And I think it was, I think it was the second song that they played that. Uh, I think so. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was, but yeah. So then we were like literally a hundred feet from the stage there. They were, they were great. You know, mm. I was say, telling kid there is like when you, when you're not watching the video screens and you're watching the stage, then you know your seats are pretty good. Yep. You know what I mean? yep. and that, that's how I gauge it. That's and my we, same barometer, exact yeah. same thing. So, and I we were watching the stage more than the screen. So, you know, but awesome. uh, yeah, at, at that point, to answer your question, Tony, uh, I mean, I looked around because, you know, we were like probably at the, you know, 15, 20 yard line for, you know, they, they, the, the stage is probably the end zone area. And, and like uh, behind the stage, they didn't sell any seats, but there had to be at least 50,000 people. I would say there, it was packed. It was completely packed at that point, you know, because I didn't know what to expect. I knew there were a lot of people outside, but you know, there weren't a lot of people in there for Wolf. Um, so I was like, oh, I wonder, what, I wonder if they're, you know, I saw a lot of people outside, but when we got down onto the field and we looked up it was, it was, it was dark at that point, but you could, up at the top level, you could see people up there. It was, it was pretty packed very, you know, so I'd say about 50,000 people. The place holds seventy thousand, I think, for a football game. Yeah. So, you know, it was. Huh. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it, it it was. As somebody was saying, as as we're walking out uh, after the show, I wonder how many people got uh, Delta tonight. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, yeah. looked, you know, I turned around, and go, probably everybody. You know what I mean? Because it's just like. <laughs> It does make you wonder if that's going to keep people away. I mean, even shows that are claimed yeah. that, that are supposedly sold out, it makes you wonder if, you know, some people aren't going to go. It's... Yeah, it's true. Were people wearing masks, John? I didn't see one mask there the whole night. Mm. Really? No, nah, not one. You know what it is? It, things, are, you know, like in California, Neil, I mean, you guys are probably all masked up already and going yeah. you know, anywhere public. We're, we're really not like I think tomorrow yeah. they're, they're telling us we got to start wearing masks in some places or something. But it's 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 kind of still relaxed here in New York. It's not, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I think from, from well, basically, L.A. was like that for a month. I mean, the month of June was like that. And then that's what put us back. So, right. you know, not to get overly you know, into that subject, but the, you know, LA is, they've the first, they instituted a mask mandate for like two weeks just for outdoors and, or being going into stores and stuff. And that's not stopping anything And the numbers, you know, there's 4,000 new cases today. Wow. So they're, they're now the next step is probably in about two weeks, they're going to, you're going to have to require, have require the vaccine, a proof of a vaccine to go into a restaurant or bar. Right. And, or in the gym and uh you know things like that they're starting I didn't so of course think you'd come to that but I'm, I'm i am well prepared or, yeah that's um, I, carry that. that's yes. that's that's where that's where we're going and yeah. i'm sure we're, it's it's just a matter of time that that's going to happen yeah. here too because yeah. i heard you know and school hasn't started yet so yeah. you know that's yeah. that's the other thing exactly. this is all happening before you're putting kids in school so yeah exactly but we're just a little behind here as far as that, which is surprising yeah. because New York was like the, you know, and actually where oh, I God, yeah. here was the, you know, one of the well, hot spots, really. If, if in reality, if this tour gets cut short, John, you, you got to, you got to, right. see, <laughs> you got to see it though. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You know, Tony, it's like something we're not even thinking about. We're all thinking, oh, you know, Wolf will tour. He'll do a club, you know, club tour in the fall or something like that. But yeah, you know what? You don't know. It's conflicting things, and it's like, but most of them are not good. You know what I mean? What's what, what we're having? He's got with. a lot of dates packed to the end of October. Right. Um, a bunch of shows each week. Yeah. And. It, <laughs> Uh, a lot of ha uh, headline shows scattered amongst the weeks too. Yeah, on the off days too, right? 
doesn't he? Yeah, a bunch of hit, like nine of them. So, um. Yeah, consider yourself lucky. Someday, someday, you know, they're they're. If anything happens to this tour, John Fruitcake Tony's right. Like this is, you're gonna sit back and be like, I I saw one of ten shows on that opening yeah. tour. I think subliminally that's why because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it or anything yeah. like that. And when I had the when the window of opportunity opened up, I was just like, you know, yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Good man. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And that was such a treat to watch <laughs> that um, Wolfgang set in real time, dude. Thank you. Could you hear it? Pretty. Could you hear it? Yeah. Good? Hell yeah. Well, good. Yeah. It was nice and loud there, I have to say. It was good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um But uh so Tony, we were, we also we were, I went to the merchandise tables a couple a couple of them. I, I had Tony on there and I was going, I went to a couple different ones trying to find see what they were what they had there. They they only had three, was I say three Wolfgang uh Mammoth W V H shirts. I think that's all they had there. They had like a zip yeah. up a zip up uh Hoodie. You know, yeah, like a hoodie with a zipper on the front. They had that. And then they had two T-shirts. And then one of them had uh, the vinyl. You could buy the vinyl for 40 bucks. I don't think it was signed or the, or the CD. And that, that was it. And Guns had a bunch of stuff, too. Tony, what I did notice in the parking lot after the show was somebody did have a, a shirt. I don't know if it was an official shirt. It was pretty cool, though. And it, was, uh, it did have the date on it for just uh, MetLife. Oh, that's cool. It was it was nice enough that it could have been an official shirt. So, you know, I've, was, I've seen some gun shirts, Met Life, and and that date on them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, that's the one. Maybe the one of the ones I saw. It was a gun shirt. It wasn't a mammoth shirt, but right. it, was, it did have the right, date right. on it. For that yeah. yeah, and I noticed that on the right. I was thinking to you. I was like, oh, look at that. I wonder if that's a you know, official shirt. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guns will normally make their shirts with the exact date on it, um, amongst the stuff. They, they do a lot of merch, not, not maybe as much as Kiss does, but they, Guns does a lot of merch. Yeah, they sold a lot that night. There were a lot of people on the lines there. <laughs> yeah, guns since um, 16, them getting back together. They've, they've made. Somebody there told me. Two. Yeah, somebody there told me that night that, I, which I didn't know. I, I kind of had an I, I heard a little bit of, of it, but they said that basically Axel owns the, the name and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So basically, Slash and Duff are just well paid, you yeah, know. Right. Uh, what do you want to call them? Uh, you know, hired guns. Hired guns. Yeah, well paid hired guns, right? Yeah. I think one one of them, the agreement was twenty eight percent. Oh yeah. Thirty one percent, and Axel makes the rest, but he's pays the band and has all the right overhead right right but they you know there wasn't much interaction between you know like axel and slash really you know not not too much you know i mean that that's just the way slash is though he's kind of in his own doing his own thing but oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you know even like eddie and dave would you know smile and pretend you know they were friends <laughs> for two hours you know what i mean <laughs> and then they'd we shake their Shake hands and then they wouldn't see yeah. them until right showtime. They'd shake hands again, go out on the, right. the next night. You know what I mean? It was like the next city, you know. We've um we didn't talk about this last night on on the show, but um I'll tell you, and I'm a big guns fan, but since sixteen Axel has sang his ass off. But this tour, what I see, it is a seems like an aged Axel. I, I agree, and as the show went on, it was evident. Yeah, um, that's what I see. He was um, a little, he was much fresher at the beginning, you know, and then as the mm -hmm. as the show went on, it was you could, it was, you know, 
my son said he's he looked at me he goes he's not in david lee roth territory yet but he's not <laughs> but he's not far he's not far off you know what i mean you can tell he was, he was struggling a little bit there at certain times you know but uh you know it, it was definitely evident like about halfway through the show toward to the end that he was you know you know he wasn't as fresh as he was at the beginning you know yeah. and uh so, it's a long show, and they've got what, like three it, months, right, to go? Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. they booked Neil into next year too? Do they have twenty twenty two dates also? They uh, they they've I, got Mexico dates. They they've got next year. New, yeah, and I believe they're festival in the dates. Fall, they but they've got this tour the started in sixteen. So if you take COVID the one year out, I mean that's what five year tour. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's got to be the longest tour in history. I, I don't think they can actually call it that because it would stop for nine months and then a new leg in Europe or the States would start. Um, yeah, I know that there's been some pushback from people in weird circles, but about like their, 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 their numbers, their, their, total gross for the tour, the not in this lifetime tour is like astronomical. It's through the roof. There's some, you know, like they're approaching like a billion dollars oh, in tour. It's like and, the number two. But the pushback uh, has been other time. people saying it's not fair to keep calling it the same tour. You know, there's other people that are like, we, you know, our tour made X amount of dollars and we just played for a year. So it's interesting to hear people petty squabble about that. Well, I mean, when a band goes out and they've had a number of tours, and they can say, man, I've done four tours and you're still calling it the yeah. <laughs> same thing. Yeah. And it's the yeah. same set for basically five years. <laughs> I know. So, so we're, John, we, we also watched Guns at MetLife. <laughs> and Some of I it. got to see that new song absurd um yeah it's different yeah it is <laughs> i'll say that it's different that kid's machi that just said that the stuff was hard for axel to sing even when he was in his 20s <laughs> 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 that's 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 true that's true well but you know and vocals are a muscle that's, you know, I, I I would hope that at this stage of Axel's career, he doesn't think he can just turn it on and off into like a faucet and not warm up and not do vocal exercises and not, you know, I, I would hope that he treats it like the way an athlete would because doing a three-hour set for basically three, four nights a week for the next four months, I mean, you that's, you know, young idiot kids go out on tour and think like, oh, I don't have to warm up. You know, if I'm playing every night, that's that's enough practice for me. The older older guys know that no, there's I have I have to have a routine to be able to sing that way. So for sure. Unless you're Dio. <laughs> he always said he never warmed up. He just did it. Well, there's always there's always the outliers that are just I know, gifted. I know. He's and, the exception to the rule. Yeah. I just got a feeling like I said to my son, I go, you know, see shows like this. I go, this is the, this is this is their, uh, you know, I, I don't think they're going to be around like that much, much longer. Big show because the bands are are not there anymore. You know what I mean? They're they're getting old and they're, you know, you heard Charlie Watts and the Stones is not even touring with them now. Yeah. This flag. You know, these they're all getting older. And also the fans are getting older, too. And, you know, and a lot of people don't want to go out anymore. You know what I mean? It's like some people still do. It's like for a big event like this. And I think Axel realized that, and I do think the Van Halen guys realized that too when they got back together with Dave in 2007. And and this is their opportunity because they don't obviously we know they don't even record albums anymore because generally generally nobody does because they don't make any money off them. You're gonna know, spend a year of their life in a studio. To, somebody's gonna get something for free. You know what I mean? Why bother? So and if they have the catalog, which a lot of these bands do, they'll just go out and do the uh, nostalgia trip. You know, yeah, the legacy tour. Yeah, and they'll make but my more question, money. Neil, is how many more years can they do this doing the same show? Like, when will it reach the point where people simply won't want to pay well, that that's, amount of money to see the same show they've seen? This, that's this, that's a great question. That saturation. This point. Oh, I think they're close. They gotta be right. I think they're close. I think if if it, obviously 
it's fresh and exciting now because people are starved for oh, live COVID, entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. everybody's going to run right out and do it. Right. But yeah. I know this personally from friends of mine that have seen this tour. Right. They, over play, the, the, you know, they play the same markets too. Yeah. Right? And three or four times, 2016, 2017, right. 2018. Yeah. And yeah, I know really like true. friends of mine that, you know, said like, Hey, you know, you're going to this tour and the, the average feeling of people that have already seen it of the people I know are, mm, eh, you know, it's it's kind of like that. So you're absolutely right. At a certain point, and I think they're coming dangerously close to it, COVID has reinvigorated fan base. But right. if they play this whole tour, like let's say they're doing this a year from now and they're going out and, and like there's no interruptions in this tour and they play nonstop. And then in 2022, they're playing this set again. I think they're good. They can expect a whole lot of people being turned off by it and just being yes. like, I, I don't yes, I don't need to see the same show. Yeah is shorter on, on the yeah yeah i saw that yeah week. it's not like the 2016 2017 you know where you were getting 29 songs mm -hmm. a night um now it's 21 or two yeah. and i think that's honestly smart i think that's i think that's intelligent to to, to reference something both of you guys said john you even mentioned this you know they're as Guns N' Roses gets older, their audience gets older, too. They're not really finding a whole lot of brand new fans that are young. You know, some people, you know, some kids are turned on to them by their parents and stuff like that. But the average person that can spend the kind of money to go see the Guns N' Roses shows are prob probably saw Guns N' Roses in the 80s, in the 80s and 90s. So that fan group is also going to get to a point where they don't, I'm not, I don't, you know, I talked about this earlier in the show. There's no way now I would want to go see a band start at midnight and play till three in the morning. I wouldn't do it. I just, I wouldn't do it. I have no desire to be to stand in one place for three hours. Yeah. I'm just On not going to do it. Day night yeah. too. Right. Right. So I think that that I, them trimming down, trimming some of the fat on their set, and starting at 8.30, I think is smart. I think it's really smart. I mean, yes, there's diehards that want to see them play every song they ever played. Of course, there's going to be a few. But it so, might be time so, to trim the fat. So, John, that, that Wolfgang set at MetLife on the East Coast started at what time? Um, I'm trying to remember if it was uh... – 6.30? It, it, was it was really think, early. Yes, it, it was. was it was because my friend, early. my friend, I guess he was looking at, at Fenway. They must have started maybe at six forty-five or something like that. So the doors for the show were like five thirty then or so. Yeah, they were. Yeah, it was pretty early because we got there and we just you know walked through all the tailgaters. We just checked out what was going on and we just headed right in because I didn't want to. Did the know. ticket say a show time at all? Did it say a show time? I'll be honest with you, I didn't even look at the ticket. <laughs> no, I'm, the only reason I ask, I don't mean to cut you off. The only reason yeah. I ask is because there's been a, plenty of times in my show I've wanted to see the opening act and right. just didn't think they would start as early as they did. And then you missed three or four songs. And I'm like, what the, I, yeah. you know, the showtime didn't say that. So I'd, I'd be, if they're, I'd be pissed if the tickets didn't say a showtime and it Wolf gonna, started at 630. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to say it didn't because my buddy, he was pretty well, you know, he he had everything all planned out and uh yeah. and he that's thought that's really Wolf, early. That's really yeah. early. He thought Wolf was coming on at six forty five, you know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah. Good nice. good for your buddy. <laughs> but yeah, that's... but he, he missed the first couple songs because he thought he was coming on at six forty five and he came on earlier than that, you know. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look and make sure I'm not late. Yeah. I... Yeah. Um, yeah, that's early for a rock show. Usually they're like 7.30 opening yeah. act, headline or nine, you know. Well, especially a stadium show, you have to allow for people to get off work, go get parking. I mean, John, you talked about parking. Like 6.30 yeah. is hard. That's hard, right. dude. It's... It is, and especially in New York where there's like – Right, know, right. It's not, you know – not as bad, maybe not as bad as your guys' traffic and Boston, <laughs> right away, but, but it's, it's New York is its own animal. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> say New Jersey, not New York. It's New Jersey. Right, yeah. So. yeah, talk to the Jersey Transit Authority. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that that was surprising <laughs> that it was so early, you know. And there was such a long gap in between when Guns N' Roses came on. You know, you figure, okay, if you if you're gonna put him on that early, then you know, yeah. but how boom, long of a gap? 
it was it was it was long it was all, an hour. Uh, i would say i'm trying to remember now because i had a lot going on because i was outside running around the stadium to get the bracelets on there but um i think wolf got off at like maybe 7 15 maybe seven maybe seven maybe a little later no I, it was maybe around but they didn't come on until around 8 30 so mm. I think it was so it was it was it was over an hour i would say yeah after we watched Wolf and then you walked around and showed me the merch stuff and, and then I lost right. you. Um, you didn't click back in with guns until right. however much, an hour later. Yeah. That's because I had to go back inside and meet my buddy and run outside and get the thing. And I figured I'd surprise you when we got in there. And then the, the cell service sucked down there. It was like, <laughs> you know, we were a couple hundred feet back there. It was fine we're, we're for Wolfgang. But when we got up close to the stage, it was just, it, it wasn't very good. I didn't think I was even going to be able to connect with you. I had to I'd try a couple of times. But yeah. it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was cool watching that live, though. God, that was cool. Yeah. John, John, did any did any of the songs jump out at you more that you liked live that maybe you didn't like on the album as much? Was there any like things that kind of, or was it pretty much formulaic? I mean, I know they sound like the album. That's great, but yeah. sometimes the, the, did anything like change your mind? No, I, it was what I expected them to sound like. I, you know, they they did sound really really good. I mean, uh, you know, the other guitar player. They, they, he was very his guitar. Even when he was doing solos, because I, I, he was doing a share of solos and songs, and they just never cranked him up. Though it was just you know when mm. it was his turn, it was like you can you can barely hear him. You know, yeah. You know, Slash sounded great though. You know what I mean? He was nice and loud in your face, his guitar. But uh, um, yeah, that was the thing that stuck out for me. It was like boy, he was like kind of push him up a little bit. You know what I mean? The other guy. Cause you could, Wait, are you know, talking about guns? Yeah, guns. The other oh, guitar. oh, no. oh I, was, I meant Wolf. I oh. meant Wolfgang. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I didn't even yeah, yeah no, I don't, I don't. Yeah, Guns N' Roses. Uh, yeah, Richard Fortas, though. By that, by the yeah. way, that guy. He right. he should have his volume cranked too. That yeah, guy's exactly. phenomenal. That's what I was yeah. kind of. Yeah, he is yeah. awesome. Yeah. I would I would be disappointed if I couldn't yeah. hear him play. I uh, yes, <laughs> sorry, I meant Wolfgang. Yeah. Uh, Wolfgang. I mean, I I love Mr. Ed. I thought that sounded really great, and the song Mammoth. I, I love that song. It's one of my other mm -hmm. favorites on the album. Um, that those two are definitely my. You know, maybe because they are my favorites, and Think It Over is my favorite. You know, my other favorite, yeah. and uh, you know, and I and I like uh, uh, I like that they ended with um, Epiphany. Epiphany, because that's yeah, I've had another. my eye on that. So. That's, a, that's yeah. a great song, and a great one to end with too. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. Those are the stands out standouts to me, and it was so cool seeing Wolf play some lead guitar and some doing some tapping. It was just like you know, you know, it was just kind of cool. I was like, you know, you kind of got a little pride, you know. It was like, yeah, you're proud of this kid, you know. He was like, yeah, you know, that maybe the people that are the Guns fans, they're just not as you know intimately aware of you know the stuff like van us van halen lunatics are you know what i mean you know yeah yeah so does he does it does wolf feel like a front man yet or do you think that that's going to come in time a little bit because i know I, i've seen from some of the some of the footage he moved around i, I mean obviously i'm not talking about where you have to stand in front of your microphone but i mean like when he was in van halen he moved around a lot more and you know was a little looser i feel like right now he's shouldering a whole lot for this yeah so I think he, I think he does a good job as a frontman. I think that the thing that's lacking is the onstage banter. He's I don't think he's very comfortable with that because he's yeah. like, "Hello, New he'll, Jersey. He'll, he'll yeah. get there. How's everybody doing?" <laughs> right, right, right. He'll get there. And yeah, in, I, at, I hope so. At, I hope so. At I, your show, he he dropped a couple f bombs, yeah. which he did. <laughs> right at, at the previous shows, but yeah. he's loosening up. He's, he is. He's, and, yeah. Yeah, he'll be at the, fine. At the end of his set, he said, "You know, one of the hey, you know, go buy a T-shirt, you know, and, go, and if you don't, and if you if, if you don't like us, if you think we suck, buy two and then throw one out on your way out. Throw them out. Your way out. <laughs> See, <laughs> good, good. Yeah. That's what, that's that's what I'm. I, yeah, I want him to yeah. kind of get to that level. I know, right? That, you know, it's nerve wracking when this is your debut album and the expectations yeah. are higher than they've ever been because your Definitely. dad just passed away before you released it, and then all this. That's I, I you know, I I know he's got a great personality. Yeah, I so. think that's he's. he's, doing he's great. He, I think he's, he's lucky because he's got his uncle with him for the whole tour. His uncle Pat. 
I know his mom wasn't there that night because she tweeted out, if anybody's got footage, you know, send it or, you know, post it or send yeah. it to me or something like that. So I, I'm 90% sure she wasn't there that night for the show. So, um, you know, uh, but as as it went on, he loosened up. And I guess it's got to be daunting, too, because it is New York. I'm sure it is. You know, I'm sure it is. New yeah. Jersey, whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I think as it went wow. on, he, he loosened up, you know. Simon, Simon, wow, one more reason. Simon, one more reason I love you. You played with Richard Fortas. Unbelievable. I love, I love that guy. But I, that, oh, that's so cool. Fan of big guitars, by the way. <laughs> Richard yeah. Fortis plays Gretsch's. And yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, he plays. I do, too, in a weird way. And this is going to sound really, like, vain and idiosyncratic. But I, I'm a tall guy. And so occasionally strats always look. They, I don't like a guitar that makes me look like a giant when I'm on stage. So I've always played a bigger guitar because it looks more proportionate to my body on stage. I don't feel yeah. like I dwarf it. So I think a lot of people feel uncomfortable. I, I you know, Wolfgang the, with the 335, I think he probably, he, that's, you know, actually, that's, that's a really good point. Feels, I think he feels very, con and the Wolfgang guitar that's is a so really small. Good point. It's, it's uh, a small guitar, myself. Wolfgang, you know, the guitar. I always said they should, they should make a, a, a larger yeah. model yeah. of all these guitars. You know what I mean? Because a lot of guys, if you're not over six feet sure. tall, a lot of these cars look tiny. Like you're saying, they look tiny. Like you know. So yeah, yeah. I remember uh, not to veer too off the subject, but I mean, I remember the very first time I held uh, a Kramer fifty one fifty replica guitar and right. this was I saw like a tribute band play and it was the first time I'd actually held it as an adult you know I played a a, a Kramer as a kid like a striker or something was in my first band but my mind I had this vision of the proportions of the guitar compared to Eddie's body in my head so memorized it was so ingrained in me because I've seen so much footage and then I picked up the guitar and I put it next to me I was like, "Wow, that's small." It felt like a toy, like a kid's guitar, <laughs> and, it looked, and it looked big on him in 1984. You that's, know? <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It was like, yeah, it was like the first time I held like Prince's Cloud guitar, right. uh, and, and everything. I was like, "This has to be for toy. This is a toy." <laughs> yeah, right. That's so, I think there's definitely something to that. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to find the shot of the merch. There it is. Somebody in the chat. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There so, is. so John, those those prices there don't look like the prices that me and you looked at. No, the uh, the the hoodie over there does that have a zipper on it? That was a hundred bucks at at MetLife, and the regular T-shirts were fifty, so it was twice the price of, of them here. But it was. Yeah, it was, these are from one of his club gigs. Yep. Ah. Uh, so Guns is getting their cut, I guess, huh? Yeah, Guns. I'm sure Guns of Roses sets the sale price of all merch. Yeah. So. Plus, the venue always gets twenty percent. Yeah, so you have to mark uh, it up. Yeah. They they all sold a lot of shirts there that night. That's for sure. That's cool, though. That's cool. You know, so going back to the 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 tour um we talked about this in the green room right before we started and i'm curious to know what some of the people out there think some of the viewers uh two nights ago uh or last night i guess it was uh he played a longer set than he has played during most of the tour so far and they debuted it was the live debut of the song feel which to be honest with you i'm surprised that's the first time they played that on this tour that's what that that aside from think it over feel is my standout track on the album it's my favorite track in the album yeah. um Keith actually mentioned in the chat a little bit ago too that he said like they should have done the because of all the instrumental breakdowns of every instrument that would be a good place to introduce the band which is pretty clever that's actually kind of neat um, that's true yeah but feel, so I'm I, I love that song but I haven't seen a clip of it live yet because up until last night there wasn't one and then he played a non-album track which uh, Kid said that he played uh, during the club in either Kansas or somewhere else right before the tour, which I wasn't know, but it's a non-album cut called, uh, what's it called? As Long As You're Not You. And last night he played it as the closer. It was, uh, it was, it was the second encore. So I have no idea what the song sounds like. I haven't seen footage. So if anybody out there knows anything about it, I mean, I'm hoping video turns up by the end of the night. But if you're going to close with it, 
it's got to be a rocker. I mean, it's, you would assume it's got to just be an epic song. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear new stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing I, I want to bring up, uh, the original Power of Mutant mentioned it too, the Wolfgang bass. It was kind of cool to see uh, the EVH gear up there on the stage. You know, yeah. there was a, uh, a Wolfgang uh, custom that uh, one of the, the ivory one it was a custom. He's got a couple of them. Yeah, it was nice to see that and uh, see the bass player, Rob, uh, playing the Wolfgang bass, which was kind of cool. I don't know if they altered it a little bit. I was trying to get a good look at it because the lower like cutaway on it, it almost looked like it was a little more of a V, a V shape to it. I don't know if it was just the way it looked on the video screen, but uh, it that, you got to you got to figure that that might be a, the production model, and that you know next year you know at Nam they're gonna they're gonna say hey here it is Wolfgang bass you know you, you would think by now. I like those bases the the shapes that he used in Van Halen. Yeah. With the yeah. blue stripes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But it, it was nice to see that, you know, it, when when you when you got into the place before they came on, all you saw front and center was the, you know, the ivory 412 and the 50-watt head uh, well, EVH, <laughs> uh, the 5153 head there. It was kind of cool just seeing that front and center right on the, you know, in front of the drum riser. It was, it was pretty cool. And, uh, but you know, it, EVH was uh, well represented. EVH gear there, you know, that on the tour, so it's kind of cool. But um, nice, nice, yeah. They they've got um, a couple of shows next week. Um, I think a couple the week after. Yeah. The yeah. set list was the set list was was really good. They they played. I thought it was well put together. It was well thought out. You know they yeah. they touched you know all the, the 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 spots on the album that they really needed to, and uh, and I just thought the, the the way the flow of it was really well. You know you could tell he he, he thought a lot about it putting it together. Wolf yeah. and his band are tight too. They're incredibly tight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that might have surprised a lot of people, like saying, "Oh, you know, this is Van Halen's son," and you know, but uh, I think people were like, "Whoa, you know, this guy's real deal." And and his his voice was, it was so good, guys. That was one thing, like like Neil, you're saying things that that the front man, you know. I remember on Jimmy Kimmel that night, he seemed a little you could hear a little nervousness in his voice. Obviously, you know what I mean, but. uh, but he seemed real comfortable when he came out there. He was belting it, and he, he just sounded really, really good. His voice really cut through real nicely. So, Yeah, you know, I, I had this conversation with a couple of people in the, the night the album dropped. We were talking, you know, me and a bunch of friends were talking about it. And uh, the, the, ironically, and this is going to sound shocking because he's such a freaking talented musician across the board. I think his lyric, his vocal, not his lyrics, his lyrics are good, but I think his vocal is probably the most surprising and maybe yeah. the best thing about it. I mean, the kid yeah. can really sing. And John, yeah. we talked about the song, Think It Over. I think we talked about that song a couple of times when he goes, for the, during the last pre-chorus, when he goes up, doesn't mean anything to you. And he goes, yeah. I mean, he just, and yeah. he, you know, it's, he, he can, he can elevate it and scream, but in key and keep, you know, it's yeah. just, and, and it's, it just flows. It seems natural. And he's, he's such a gifted person. He's, he's got a gift for the melody. And that to me, if you can, yeah. do, if you got the gift for the melody, you, you can do it all. He can, you know, I totally agree with you. Totally yeah. agree with you. That's, There's that's, so many, so many things that stand out. Cause I, you know, as a writer, I focus on, you know, melody lines and things like that. And the vocal has to sound like an instrument. If you, you know, if you took everything else away, could you build yeah. a song around a vocal? Got it. Exactly. Right. And that type of stuff. And he's got it all. There's so many songs on this, you know, if you check yeah. in boxes, instrumentation is great. Percussion is great. Guitar is great. Vocal melody is great. Chorus. Yeah is catchy and lyric is good right. you know yeah i mean you're checking all these boxes yeah, it's, well, it's, everything's well constructed those songs are they're very well like you said yeah. you know every element in there in each of these songs and uh and i mean his voice is like you know 
you, on when they you saw him with Van Halen, you know the background vocals are great. Obviously, right. Eddie and him worked on the harmonies and stuff like that. Oh yeah, but they, but they you listen to a different kind of truth, and it's just like you know they sounded pleasant, but you know everybody's saying, well, it's you know we're used to the Michael Anthony voice in there. Yeah. We're not, it's not there, and and I don't think that they when they mixed that album, I don't think they really featured those background. I don't think they punched them up. I thought in some songs they could have been louder and stuff too. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, when you first heard him, you know, sing, it's just like, what? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. He's amazing. You know, you know, Mark, mark my words someday, like 10 years, 15 years down the road, when people talk about, Hey, who was, who was the best singer in Van Halen? Don't yeah. be surprised if somebody says Wolfgang. <laughs> no, you're right. And you know, and, and, and I was thinking about it too. You know, you, you start to think like, man, wouldn't it have been cool if, you know, if it, if they ever were just to do an album with the three of them, but when they, you know, if it could yeah. have, you know, it could have been something pretty, you know, amazing. Even if they had a song, you know what I mean? Like that, the, three, yeah. you know, the, the uncle and his dad and, and him, you know, his uncle, man, Ford, that would have, that would have been yep. incredible. You yep. know, let the kid, let the kid write his own lyrics and say like, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, they, that would have been something else. Would have been something else. I know, right? Oh well. Yeah. Well, they they are they got a, a lot of dates booked. I mean, a lot of dates. You know what else is cool about the you know real quick going back to the set list, John, and before we move on. Um, and them playing a new non-album track the other night, I had heard rumblings like right around the time the album came out that uh, he had enough material for another album already. Like, cause this, this, this collection for, for the debut album had been written some of the songs four or five years ago and just kind of tracked and finally put out this past year. But, you know, it, I mean, it's, I'm sure just like his dad, there's probably a ton of leftovers. There's a ton of cuts. There's, yeah. you know, there's outtakes, there's B sides that didn't make it. And then there's songs that he may be testing for the next record. I mean, it would be cool if throughout the course of the tour, if every couple shows he throws in a non album cut just to kind of get a vibe. Do people like it? Do people not? Yeah. You know, that's, that's right. how you test stuff. You know, it's crazy. He said that the first song he ever wrote was the song mammoth, like that he, that he, <laughs> Wrote the right. I mean, right. and you and I are talking about this. Is like, are you kidding me? I mean, yeah. that was the first song you wrote. It was like, you know, most people write a hundred songs. <laughs> yeah. one, like, it sounds yeah. okay. This is pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the first thing you write, and it's that song. It's amazing. I'm so, still trying to write a song that good. I've been writing yeah. for thirty years. <laughs> Incredible, right? Exactly, right. So when you hear that, and you're like, wow. And then, and knowing that that album was in the can for you know since yeah. 2018, it was done. So yeah. obviously, he just kept continue writing because he even said his father had heard a lot of the ideas that are going to be on the next uh -huh. one. He, right. His father was well aware of, it and he heard them all too. So I think he's I, I, when he gets off the road, I think he's going to go right in, and he's going to have the you know I'm sure he's got the whole thing done already. You know, yeah, yeah. Album, you know, I do too. But I just say, I mean, I got to give him credit though for this. I just mentioned this. I think it takes an incredible set of balls and confidence to play an unheard album, non-album song on the tour for your debut album when you just start, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's just, that's that, you know that this kid's got the goods. Yeah, you're right. Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, it, it can't be easy, you know, between all the pressure he has of the last name uh, and then he's, he's leading a band. I mean, it's just like, uh, and then, so it's all falls, a lot falls on his shoulders. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. And, uh, you know, but I think he's I, handling it very well. Yeah. I think I, I got to, this is going to not to sound like all like Dr. Phil on everybody, but I, I feel like it's, that's a result of good parenting. I think, um, right. I mean, the reality is he had to have been prepared for a long time, I bet his mom and dad both kind of prepared him for the fact that there are going to be people out there that are going to turn on you. And right. when you play, there, people are going to come out to see you and expect Van Halen. Yeah. And you're going to play something, you know, you're playing songs that sound like 90s rock bands, alternative, grunt, you know, like all kinds right. of stuff. Like there are people that are going to turn on you. And I think he's I think he's been so well prepared and grounded in that. And then, of course, you know, having people prop him up and say, you're good enough. You know, Eddie saying to him over when you've yeah. got the greatest guitar player in history saying to you, don't yeah. copy me. You're good enough. Do what you do, because it's that good. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I 
that oh god it, 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 my heart kind of swells when i talk about this stuff because it's just i mean he's Eddie's with him every night. And I love the fact that his dad is saying, don't do what I did. Do your own thing. You know, I'll kill you if you go out there and try to recreate right, what exactly. I did. Which is, which is great. It's like, I hope he doesn't ever do anything. You know, I, yeah, don't even, it's beautiful. Don't anything, it's such know? a beautiful story that he's playing the music he wants to play with the blessing of his father. Yeah. That's just amazing. And you know what? Uh, those Van Halen tours that he, that he did, I'm sure they toughened him up a little bit too, because I'm sure <laughs> you know he's of the gen internet. Yeah. Channel. He read all the stuff that people were saying about him online, and, and I'm yeah. sure you know yeah. it, it it thickened his skin a little bit towards that. You know what I mean? And I'm sure his father. Yeah, they were attacking like, him when he was 14. It's yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So I'm sure you know that that was boot camp for you know for this in a way. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. But the yeah. bottom line is, you know, he, he he's got the goods. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's like, People exactly. can do what they want, but you know what? They, it doesn't hold water because he doesn't suck. He's really yeah. – he's that good. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's that good at everything he does. And we all were like, oh, yeah, of course Eddie's going to say – wait till you hear this kid. Eddie would always say. And we're like, yeah, oh, you know, okay. We hope that he's as good as Eddie says, but, you know, Eddie's going to say that no matter what, even if he – you know, I'm sure Yeah, that, I'm sure, of course. But when we first heard that, we were – I remember that day on Howard Stern when I heard uh, You're to Blame. I mean, we heard uh -huh. this. Was uh -huh. like, and I was just like – Oh my God! He, I, all I could think of is his father, and I was like, "He was not lying. He was telling." Yeah, me he wasn't. He wasn't like, joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, exactly. John, I, I, yeah, I, I love the. Oh man, I don't even know how to put it into words. But you're, I mean, he's one of the things I like that he's doing is, I mean, because we know how talented he is because he recorded every every single instrument on the album. But I love the fact that on stage, you know, he's giving Frank Sidora some lead parts. He's, uh, you know, letting some other guys do like it's he doesn't he doesn't feel the need. Maybe like an insecure kid would want to go out there and showcase. Right. Look how good I am. Yeah, right. I'm worthy of a Van Halen name. And he, you know what he's doing? And John, we we talk about songwriting all the time. He lets the songs speak for themselves. Right. And true musicians out there, everybody that's watching, everybody, you know, like. If the song is good enough, let the song do the talking. That's it. That's uh, and and they are so yeah you know, yeah they are they are. Hey, listen, just like you know, think how great it's going to be. He's got that studio, and he says he wants to use that his entire life. Fifty one fifty, and yeah. can you just imagine what you know? What, and and he loves like the Foo Fighters, and you know, eclectic the Foo yeah. Fighters are. Yeah, and that's why I like on on this album. He like he made a statement. Okay, here's you know. This is this is it, but that's going to change too. He's going to space off and do some like you know, like like the Foo Fighters just do left disco out there, yeah. left field, right? He's yeah. going to throw, and I I want to hear that. I want. I do to too. Like, yeah, I do too. I do too. Yeah. I want I want him to not be afraid to evolve and yeah, exactly and evolve exactly. This is the starting point, and let's see, you know, in the next album, I want to hear you know, you know, uh, all kinds of different stuff. You know what I mean? Sure. Different kinds of music. You know, so let me ask yeah. you guys this. What do you think? I mean, as tight as his band is, what are you guys' takes on the fact that he uses a couple guitar players and he plays a lot of guitar himself, too? Um, I've did any kid, do you have any thoughts on this? I don't want to keep stealing all the, <laughs> the yeah, conversation. <laughs> Um, what is the, does the guy in the, how could, you know, he has one guy to his right who does a lot of the Frank. split leads. Is yeah. the guy in the back, yeah. the one in the back, is he mostly just doing rhythm? You know how he's like set back by the drums? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, from, from what I gather, and I'm not a hundred percent positive on this, but I'm pretty sure he was the, the guy is, uh, John, John Jordan. Yeah. Um, he was the last addition to the band. The band was basically, Wolf, Frank, drummer, bass player. Yeah, those it was the four piece. And they were in tour rehearsals trying to figure out how they were gonna, you know, what guitar parts they were gonna have to cut out because some of the songs had three and four guitar parts overlapped, overdubbed. Um, and then Wolf said he saw this guy, and this guy can also sing. So he brought him in, and because now he rounds out so they don't have to cut any guitar parts out of the live show. Everything, every, all the tracks are covered on the live show, and all the vocal tracks are covered on the live show. Okay. But I haven't seen enough of the footage to actually answer if this guy is, if he's doing, if he's doing fills, if he's playing, you know, if he's strumming, if he's, if he's finger, you know, there's all kinds of, they, does he cut out? 
He's and, a, and wait and then come in in choruses. He's looks a looks like he's something. playing a Wolfgang every night. It does look yeah, like it, yeah. Yes, custom Wolfgang, yeah. the Wolfgang custom. Yeah, yeah. He's like a super utility guy because you can hear his background vocals. Very, he's very prominent. The background. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's very fantastic. Popular. Yeah, and he, he definitely does. He, yeah, he, don't let the fact that he's standing in the back fool you. You know, no, a lot of people no. would think like, oh, there's no need for a third guitarist in the band. But if Wolf said that he wanted a third guitarist in the band, then yeah. there's a reason for it. So yeah, it works. Yeah, he's carrying yeah. the same. But I've, you know, to to kid what you were saying about the other guitar player, Frank Frank Sidoris, who I've seen live probably four times. I think four times with Is Slash's that the guy band. Met in Tremonti because he played. Well, no, no, no. That was that was the other guy we just talked about. John oh, okay. Jordan was that guy. Um, I've seen Frank Sidoris play uh, a couple of times with Slash and Miles Kennedy, and I've seen them in L.A. at a like in their club dates, you know, at the Palladium and places like that. For every every Slash tour that he's come he out with Slash. Slash and, up. He plays uh, the Richard. For he plays the role that the other guy plays in yeah. Guns N' Roses. Right? Yeah, but Slash's music, you know, it's like, yeah, he. Does, I mean, Slash's. He's now at it because they have four albums out, so he's only playing three Guns N' Roses songs in, in that set and maybe a Velvet Revolver set. Whereas four or five years ago, when I first saw Slash play, half the set was Guns N' Roses songs. Now they don't need to, they got a deep enough catalog. But Frank, Frank is, is, is phenomenal, and he does you know, it's obviously if you go to see a Slash so that guy's not going to do a whole lot, but he does all the heavy riffing, all the, you know, I've, I've been on his side of the stage before where you just stare at him because Slash is off, you know, on the other wing and, and the guy can play and he can, he can do everything. Every Izzy Stradlin riff from Guns of Roses, every Gilby Clark thing that he did in Guns of Roses. Like he's, he's awesome. He's really good. So it doesn't surprise me at all that because all these guys are in that same circle. And right now, Slash's band is on a break because Slash is playing with Guns N' Roses, so this guy had free time. So he's like, hey, I'll tour with Slash anyway, just in a different band. So do you think that that's why Wolf got this gig? Uh, part of me does, yeah. I mean, you could, they're in the know, and I think Guns N' Roses probably thought, hey, this is a great marketing tour for us, you know, that we can get people there early, and it's a, it's, it's a niche. Um, I think that there's probably the business side of it made perfect sense. Wolfgang had a lot of buzz around him. He hadn't played with anybody yet. It's, it's hard rock and his name, Van Halen, works with the Guns N' Roses crowd. So I think somebody in marketing probably said it's a perfect fit. Yeah, I but, oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I also think that, you know, I, I don't know how much – I mean, I just heard, you know, Axel like maybe only met him after like the, after the night of the first show or something, and then came into the dressing room and told Wolf, and then Duff told him afterwards like Ask, Axel saw your show and said, "Oh my God, you're really good." So I don't know if the band had a whole lot of necessary like it was. I think that was a business management thing that got them on the same tour. Now that they're playing together, and Axel and Slash and those guys have seen him, they're they're taught they're giving him kudos, they're giving him props. Yeah, I, I think that I think it just all it, it all dovetailed together. I think the the business thing, like you said, was a huge part of it. But also, you know, uh, Eddie knew Slash. They, you know, they were yeah. friendly, I guess. And I, I know Duff knew them well. I, I saw Duff was at Eddie's birthday party a couple of years right. ago at, at his house. So, um, one other thing I want to point out about Wolfgang is like, so what? what I've heard other bands say this. I, I mentioned a couple of times the police and Sting, but Sting would always say when I write songs, he goes. They're like, how do you play those bass lines like and sing those bass lines and you're you know and you're doing counter like your melody is countering what you're playing on the bass. You're not playing the same thing, you know what I mean? It's like counterpoint. And he's like, well, I have to learn them after you know because when I'm writing the songs and we're recording them, I'm not doing it all at the same time. Because yeah. so go on yeah. tour, I have to learn all that stuff. And th that's another thing about Wolfgang that's pretty incredible because some of those riffs that he's playing and and he's actually, you know, he's got these other guitar players that he could just like not play that and just let them sure play. yeah he's not like in don't back down the, the riff the yeah. main riff he's singing a you know a counterpoint melody to, to what he's yeah. playing on the guitar right. it's like you, you got to split your brain in half and, and do that and he does it very well so it's yeah like, that's like the old like you know do yeah, this exactly. kind of thing it's yeah singing one singing a melody line different than what you're playing yeah. goes against your muscle memory exactly you got it and and it's and that i noticed that that night at the show i'm like wow he's actually I thought maybe one of the other guitars would pick up that and he would just, you know, just stand there and just, you know, while just sing it while he's, while they're doing that part. But he was actually playing the, 
the riff as he's doing it, you know, and it's like so he wrote the yeah. songs and I'm sure he recorded them, but then then he's got you gotta sit and learn how to to do that, you know what I mean? Like, oh, sure. It's like, yeah. You know. Yeah. Anybody that's written music before has done, like, especially if a song takes over a month to record and you go through all kinds of different parts yeah. and everything, by the time you get it done and you have to play it live, I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did, exactly. how did, I, yeah. cause I didn't record vocals at the same time. I, you know, you know, oh. it's, yeah, it's stuff like, like oh, that. Oh, man. How am I going to do this? You yeah. Know, there's no, like, yeah. I don't know how to do that. But that's, Tony, how, good, that's how good he is. He's like, yeah. he, you know, yeah. he actually does. I thought, okay. I thought when they added the other guitar player, I thought, okay, well, now he's got, you know, he doesn't have to. He can just sing and focus on that. But then I'm watching him, and, and the first song, yeah. come back down, he's playing the, da -da 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 as he's singing the, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty, very impressive. Yeah. Tony, real quick, uh, to what you were saying about um, how he got kind of on the gig thing too the other thing that i kind of just recently thought about is it also has to do with the humility of wolf too, the humbleness of him because there's a you know his somebody in his stature and his name and stuff could have come out and said i'm not going to be an opener i'm going to go on a headlining tour of my own album and i'm not going to play before somebody else so i think the fact that he was willing to do that and say hey i, I just i just want to play music and this is a great way to expose more people to my my i mean i think is i think that might have had something to do with it too you know if he was if he was more of a dick he might have come out and said no i'm not going to open for guns yeah, so and he, and he really appreciates it because if you notice like every tweet like after it, he thanks guns and roses for the opportunity he says i want yeah, yeah. thanks for this great opportunity so he gets it you know what i mean and and uh, yeah he does he does it's a credit to his parents because, you know, they they raised him, you know, right. He doesn't, you know, he's not like this entitled kid, really. You know, he's not a kid. Yeah. Anymore. He's a man now. He's 30 years old, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he doesn't have that entitlement thing. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. you know. Which is, which is rare for a Hollywood yeah. kid. You know, a kid born and raised, grown up in a celebrity household. That's, exactly. that's rare that he's so grounded. Exactly. Right. Man, he only started they... as an opening act. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so that they probably, blew Black Sabbath off the stage. <laughs> yeah, that probably plays into it, though. That you know what I mean. He figures like, he wants to do it the way that you know the old school way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. You cut your teeth on the road too, and this this gives an opportunity. And and he doesn't have a full, you know, with one album out, it's not like he could play a two hour set. So right. this worked out really yeah. well. Perfect, right? I'm still, John. I'm still <clears throat> amazed at what I saw there. Um, crowd wise and at the other show that these people are in the parking lot I know while Wolf's playing dude I am too it was, I mean, it was part of it was disappointing but then you know like I think some people got it and the people that were in there that's what made me feel better is that the people were in there were like wow this kid is good this guy is good man you know so it's the only thing that made me feel better, but they, they people didn't know what they were missing out on, you know? That's why I look at it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's there's a lot of people that someday are gonna kick themselves that yeah. they, you know, that they were at the show and they just didn't go in in time. Right. I'm the opposite. I, I just being a love of live music and a lover of, of, of discovering stuff, I never miss a live an opener, no matter what, because there's probably been countless times that I've discovered a new band that I would have never heard before. And I like being there when nobody else knows who they are yet. And I find them first and I can start telling my friends yeah. about them and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so, you're right. Yeah. So, Feels good. That's so, Neil, I was asking you earlier, how was the Nerd Halen show? Oh man, uh, that was awesome. I don't, I, I don't know if Caleb's still in the chat at all right now, but um, it was, it was fantastic. It was fun. It was exciting. Um, in a weird way, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was my first, it was my first live show um, in a year and a half. So. Hang on. Um, it was my first live show in a year and a half. The first time I've been out to see live music. So it was, it, it, you know, in LA, we knew was starting to take steps backwards. They were really enforcing the masks, even inside the club. You know, you had to, you had to wear a mask to go up to order the drink. And then you could only take your mask down to have the drink. And then, and then you had to put it back on. They were really enforcing that, which is good for the safety of all people there. But there was also like a weird kind of a hesitancy in, in the crowd, um, it, it was uncomfortable. And then on top of that, with loud music going, no matter how many people you go to a show with, usually you're screaming to your friend right next to you to be able to talk, but with the masks on, you couldn't do it. So 
that aspect of it being a fan at a show, I, you know, I might as well have just gone by myself and just stared because it was kind of pointless. You can't talk to anybody around you and you can't, you're just sitting there with a mask on that, that aside, um, it was so good to see live music again. And I've seen enough. This is the first live nerd Halen show I'd seen. Um, I've, I've been talking to Caleb for a while on Instagram and, and I've been watching the videos on YouTube and stuff. And I know how good he is. And I've seen all his, his demos and stuff like that, but you know, it doesn't do anything until you see him live on stage and you see him in the club. And the place was called the echo LA. It was a small club. Really, really small. I mean, there maybe were 100 people there by the end of their show. Um, it was loud, but clean sounding. Like the, the PA was crystal clear. So no, you could, he could, you know, he was wailing through the distortion pedal and yet you could still hear the vocal line. So it was, it was a well mixed PA system. Yeah. Um, and they rocked. They rocked. The only thing I would, the only thing I would probably report, and I can say this because Caleb told me this afterwards, so I'm not like throwing him under the bus or anything. He just said he got tired at the end. He said his hands started to cramp up, especially by the time he got to eruption right before the end. Uh, he was he was like, yeah, it was hard. You know, he hadn't played. It's one thing to practice a lot in your room, but then when you get out there and you're jumping and doing his his Van Halen splits that he's known for and stuff like that, it was a, uh, it was. He just said he got tired, but met some cool new people there, which uh, we can talk about uh, going forward, uh, made some new friends. And then it was it was fun. And then the band after him was this uh, the gay CDC, which was a uh, drag queen themed uh, ACDC cover band were phenomenal. <laughs> they were really good, really good. And of course, by the time they get to a song like Big Balls, everybody's like, oh, Of Lord. course, these guys are gonna sing this. But I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was hysterical. It was there, it was like watching, oh man, it was like half village people, half Lady Gaga playing ACDC, and they what, and they were spot on. No, for what no, what kind per- of songs did they do? Everything, mostly, mostly Bon Scott era, but kind of all kind of all over the place really wild. Well, you know they were if you want blood a uh, problem child they were they were all over the just wow, the early wow. stuff but they but they were good man they were good and they knew how to play it to a crowd you know it was it was it was fun they would jump down off the guitar player had a wireless pack so he the angus young guy would go out into the crowd with his you know leather assless chaps and his <laughs> and his cop hat and then he, you know he's doing this and walking around through the crowd just cutting through the people it was it was such a such a good time it was a it was a really cool night out it was a really really cool night out definitely something i needed right yeah so props to props to the band uh caleb every, everybody involved um there is such it was it was a good time cool nice <laughs> um yeah well cool i think i only saw one song on on his youtube channel um yeah, I'd like to see the whole show, dude. You know, I taped a lot of it, and um, I know you guys were kind of hoping I would jump on and stream live from there. And let me tell you, it, 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 you guys couldn't have heard a thing through. I mean, it was so loud, you couldn't have seen And it was dark. It was a dark club show. So I don't yeah. know what you would have been able to see. It would have been kind of pointless for me to try and stream you guys live the way John did because he was outside in the in the light. Yeah. Um, I did tape a lot of it and I talked to Caleb after the show. We talked for a little while and everything. And, uh, you know, he kind of said, yeah, I'd rather you not post a lot of the live, not a lot of the live footage. So yeah, out of respect for him, of course, I'll, I'll let the band promote what they want to yeah, put out. You know, sure, I, sure. The, yeah. that's kind of their thing. Well, there'll be more dates. Um, yeah. 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 But it was surprising. You know, I, I will say this, though. They did a couple Sammy songs and I didn't expect that. I didn't uh, I didn't you know, I kind of I've seen a lot of the footage, a lot of the uh, um, their YouTube videos and stuff. And they, it seems like they play a similar set most of the time they go out. But uh, they they dropped a couple of Sammy songs and it, it went over really well with the crowd. It wasn't like the whole crowd was, you know, f- heavily David Lee Roth fans. It was they were just Van Halen fans. And the singer. I didn't know if he was going to get to some of the Sammy notes and he did. He did. So, uh, man, it was, that was, that was a treat. I didn't yeah. expect them to do any Sammy. How's great. Yeah. Yeah. Nice dude. Nice. Um, so 
met some cool people there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. the The highlight of the night um, for everybody watching, everybody paying attention at home um, in the chat right now. Um, the highlight of the night was when I was introduced to uh, one of the actresses who starred in the Hot for Teacher video the actual Hot for Teacher video. Now, she wasn't the teacher on the desks. She wasn't the star actress. This was the detention jailer in the black and white clips that paces back and forth and has the whip. And then at the end, she's in the Where's Waldo sequence in the future, and she's one of the three girls. She's got a prominent role in that video and met her that night and talked to her. And luckily for all of us Van Halen fans, um, she is going to come. Right. There she is. Lori Tucker. Lori Tucker is her name, and she's a doll. She's such a sweetheart. I've talked to her almost every day since the show, and to be honest with you, why wouldn't I? <laughs> but um, so, yep, there she is on the right, on the right. So Lori has agreed to come on next week's show with us. So next week, we are going to have Lori Tucker from the Hot for Teacher video on Halenville Live. So you all want to make sure that you're tuning in next week. For our nice. special guest. Nice. And uh, yeah, Lori, I, I talked to her today. I know that she she did kind of, unfortunately, I hate to say this, we wanted to have the first scoop and uh, Caleb snagged her and put her on Johnny Bean's show um, Friday night. They kind of stole her and they admitted live that they stole her from us. But uh, so I talked to Lori about that and I told her, hey, it was actually she was really good. She said that she saved a lot of stuff. She held back for us. She's going to make our show better in the way she described it. She said, you know, even baseball players got to go to the minor leagues first before they can make the show. So I was like, yes. <laughs> She's just being a doll. Yeah, yeah. that was a great show. Um She's great, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and she's she's and she's I, I mean she's an actress, so that. she's 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 beautiful, she's stunning. Um, she doesn't look a day older than she did 35 years ago when she did the video, and and she's got stories. She's you know I mean just it's I I can't wait to hear I can't wait to just give her a showcase and let her just talk about it. So she's yeah. gonna have a lot to she's gonna have a lot to talk about too. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. So that was, but that was a surprise. That was like one of those cool, random, hey, only in Hollywood things. You know, you go to see a Van Halen tribute band show because you love Van Halen. All of a sudden, the actress in the video that you remember as a kid was the most iconic video you ever saw, and she's standing next to you. So it's just, yeah, yeah, couldn't have been, couldn't have been a better night. Were were you introduced as her in this, or yeah? <laughs> Well, here's here's the irony about the way it went, and I, she'll I'll share this with her as well when we talk next week. Um, so she was standing literally right in front of me. I mean, she was the the person right in front of me, and thank God I'm a tall guy, so I can see over everybody. I never have to move around. But she was standing right in front of me, and she also happened to be the prettiest girl in the bar. So you know, I'm sitting there. The first couple songs of the set, I'm thinking, eh, this is the girl. I'm you know, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to say hi. I'm just going to talk to her. You know, whatever. Just because that's what you do at a club. Um, and and I'm a I'm a chatty guy. You know, that's why I like. That's why I wanted to flirt. And right before about five six songs in, you know, right before I started to uh, you know, and she's filming the band and doing stuff, and she was there with a friend, and she was you know, and I just all I all I was really gonna do was just talk to her. I just I was just like, hey, I just want to talk to this girl. And then right before, right, literally right before I was about to do it, all of a sudden, uh, Caleb up on stage shines a spotlight on her and introduces, hey, hey, we got a special guest, Lori Tucker from the Hot for Teacher video. And then, of course, the light shines on her and I'm right behind her. And then everybody of the hundred people or so that were there come running over to try and be like, oh, my God, is that really you? And the the funny thing is half of them had no idea who it was. Half of them thought that it was probably the 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 dancing teacher, the phys ed teacher and stuff. But yeah, the for the most part. Yeah, but they just kind of bum rushed her. So then I really felt bad for her for a little while because for a, probably the next three straight songs, maybe the next four songs, she couldn't really watch the band. She's having to pose for pictures with people and do this and do that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt bad for her. And then I backed off and I wasn't even going to say anything. I, I wasn't even going to bother. I wasn't going to, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not a celebrity groupie kind of thing. That just wasn't my, so I was like, eh, I'll just leave her be. 
until after the show. Then I went, I'm talking to Caleb and she strolls up and starts talking to Caleb. And then we got introduced. And then at that point it was, you know, then, then it was like, Hey, why not? You know, what do I got to lose? Hey, you want to do the show with us You know, next week, you know, in a couple of weeks, everything, this is what we do. And I said, it's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, horny guys that, you know, probably fell in love with you when we were kids and stuff like that. <laughs> and, and, and she laughed and she said, I'd love to. Yeah, let's do it. And, and I'm not joking. No joke when I say this. We've we've been in communication almost every day since the show. She's nice. a great, great, great friend. Yeah. 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 It it was nice to watch her last night with mm -hmm. Johnny and Caleb and them. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was cool. Yeah. And she promised promised she held back. So for the people that did see that show, that doesn't mean you get to tune out on us. You gotta come back next week. Oh yeah. <laughs> And no, I I don't think nothing about that. It just it was chance them hooking. Oh up yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm know. just I'm no, I'm just giving I, them a hard I'm time. Just, I'm just busting balls. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 just saying no. Now if Kurt I did it, we'd have an issue. But If you're not wearing pink pants, don't bother. <laughs> oh, man. Kurt, I know Kurt's on the road tonight. He was uh, out of town. He went to see his uh, his brother's band's 30th, 30 year reunion concert or something. So he's on the road. He's coming back. He's getting back home late tonight. So he said he's going to watch it in the chat or in, on the replay. He's going to be able to check it out. But, uh, Kurt, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Kurt, where are you? Yeah. Kurt, phone in. Phone <laughs> home, Kurt. You know he's got his pink pants on, though. I know. He does. On his, on his head? <laughs> <laughs> but that'll be a treat next week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear all kinds of stuff. That Yeah. yeah. Story, tales from the set, you know? Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, Wolfgang's got a couple of shows grab some real quick. upcoming this week. Um, yeah. And we'll have the scoop for those shows along with Lori Tucker. Can't yes. wait. wait. So people yeah. in the chat, people in the chat, start getting your questions ready because we're going to treat this like an interview. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so maybe Lori's got some memorabilia too that she can show us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That is going to be fun. Um, yeah. I, have, I, already, I already know a question I'm going to ask. <laughs> much, do you, do much, you want to say it now? Yeah, how much Aquanet <laughs> did they play? Did they oh. shoot their hair back then, right? I bet it was a lot. <laughs> Aquanet. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to give anything away. She, or, I know a little bit about that. And, oh, really? and, yeah, I don't want to say anything. I'm going to let her tell the story. But All right, cool. ask. That's a good one to ask. <laughs> Wasn't it like a wig and? I'm not going to let her tell the story. <laughs> extra Aquanet and eight inch <laughs> Aquanet. heels and Aquanet. I think that's Aquanet. so great. That... Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna let her tell that story, but that's a good one. So good. make sure you ask about the hair. All right. I <laughs> yeah. Will. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Good deal. All right, fellas, we are gonna wrap things up here. Um, everybody in the chat, nice to see you. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, everybody. We'll be right back here talking about. Hot for teacher and the yep. video next week. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Look at it this way, folks. It's the next best thing to having the band on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, kids. We are out of here. Have a great week. Stay frosty. Yeah. <laughs> class dismissed. Yeah, you all class dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.